Hello people. <clears throat> In this video, we wanted to look at the clinical manifestations of poliomyelitis. Okay. Basically, uh, the incubation period is around uh, 7 to 14 days. Okay. And it can go from an asymptomatic to a severe paralytic stage. So many ranges. Range, there is range. So much of range. Okay. So, what is the incubation period guys? 7 to 14 days. Okay. And uh, it can go from so many, uh, from asymptomatic stage to severe paralytic stage it can be there. Okay, let's first look at apparent infection. In the apparent infection, in the apparent infection means in majority of the cases, no, you won't even know that they have the polio infection. Okay, 96% can you imagine asymptomatic. Then abortive infection, what is this abortive infection? About 5% of patients develop Minor symptoms like fiber, sorry, fever, malaise, sore throat, anorexia, myalgia, headache, all that. Very, very, very mild, normal symptoms. Symptoms. Then non-paralytic poliomyelitis. See, people have polio in which they have slight uh, aseptic meningitis, etc. Okay. But there is no paralysis. Then you have the paralytic poliomyelitis. This is one is the important one. Paralytic poliomyelitis, actually it is very, very uncommon. It is least common, less than 1%. However, this is what is so scary, you know. A lot of people have this. Though it is the least common of all the clinical manifestations. So here there is um, descending asymmetric, okay, acute flaccid paralysis, okay, acute flaccid paralysis. So here what happens, the proximal muscles are involved, right, earlier than the distal muscles. So the paralysis starts at the hip and proceeds towards the extremities. So there is something called as a tripod sign that you can see here. The child sits with flexed hip. The child sits with flexed hip. Both arms are extended towards the back for support. So this is a tripod sign. Okay. Then <clears throat> the sites involved, we are moving on here, the sites involved can be spinal, bulbospinal and bulbar. So there will be bulbar, polio, okay, etc. You should have heard of these words. The sites involved are bulbar, spinal, bulbospinal. Okay, wake up guys, are you awake? Sleeping, sleeping. What are we discussing? Clinical manifestations of poliomyelitis, yes. The person will have what and all, sometimes asymptomatic, sometimes just fever, then uh, aseptic meningitis, then mm, that is what is non-paralytic, then you have the paralytic poliomyelitis. Currently, we are discussing that one, okay. So, the uh, clinical symptoms can be based on what is happening. There can be respiratory insufficiency and dysphagia. When can this happen? If there is bulbar involvement, then there can be respiratory insufficiency and dysphagia okay next biphasic course guys we are here we are going to biphasic course now wake up okay if you're still sleeping biphasic course here the disease progression is typically biphasic aseptic meningitis occurs first then there is recovery then there is return of fever with paralytic features one to two days later okay so here there is a return, the, the person recovers, return of fever with paralytic features, okay. Moving on, cranial nerves also can get involved and there is no sensory loss. This is what is very uh, strange, okay. There is never a sensory loss, it always affects the motor neurons, okay. So even cranial nerves can get involved. Let's move on to this risk factors. Maybe risk factors should have come first, not here. Paralytic disease is common in children. Pregnant women are at risk. Following heavy muscular exercise. Persons undergoing trauma at the time of CNS symptoms. Tonsillectomy. This is so sad, right? People used to just remove tonsils left and right before. And now they are saying tonsillectomy predisposes to bulbar poliomyelitis. So tonsillectomy is a risk factor. Then IM injections. If people take intramuscular injections, they increase the risk of paralysis in involved limb. So if the limb is 
already involved, the risk of paralysis increases with IM injections. Strange, my God. So guys, we are done with the risk factors of polio. Now we'll go to the last point there in the clinical manifestations, post-polio muscle atrophy syndrome. So a recrudescence, recrudescence of paralysis and muscle wasting has been observed in individuals usually 20 to 40 years after the episode of paralytic poliomyelitis. So after 20, 40 years of polio, paralytic poliomyelitis, there is muscle wasting, a recrudescence of paralysis and muscle wasting. So it comes back, the paralysis and muscle wasting comes back. Okay. So what and all did you learn in this video? Did you learn anything at all? What did you learn? Clinical manifestations, yes, cranial nerves can be involved, motor nerves are involved. Then there can be paralysis, muscle wasting, that is post uh, uh, polio muscle atrophy syndrome, then what and all you learnt? Basically it can be asymptomatic or it can be uh, abortive, that is where there is very minor symptoms like uh, fever, malaise, myalgia, headache, etc. Non-paralytic poliomyelitis where you can see aseptic meningitis. Then comes the paralytic poliomyelitis where you should know that uh, the spine can be involved, the bulbar can be involved, the bulbospinal uh, parts can be involved. So there can be respiratory insufficiency, it is sphagia. Okay, then there is a biphasic course. What is this biphasic course? There is a uh, aseptic meningitis, recovery, then return of fever with paralysis. Then what else guys? This one, tripod sign, don't forget. The proximal muscles are affected first, then the distant muscles, okay. All the points here, see if you have got all the clinical manifestations and uh, next video we will continue. We will look at um, lab diagnosis, very important and profile access against polio is the most important question actually. So we will come back in the next video, we will look at lab diagnosis of poliomyelitis.